Sometimes Brady and Neil do experiments that are just for fun. And then they ask me what's going on. So the experiment they decided to do was to drop a piece of burning iron wool. This is finely divided iron wire that looks a bit like my hair, slightly darker. And you can light such iron wool by putting it across the terminals of a small battery. And it glows red and you can see it burning in the air. Not very vigorously, but enough to stay red. And then they dropped it into Neil's favourite cauldron, in which he often puts liquid oxygen. When they dropped it in, and they did it several times, there were the most amazing colours. Essentially, in all of it, the iron burnt. It didn't all burn, because at the end, there were bits of iron left in the bottom. The chemistry is very simple. The iron is reacting with oxygen. There are three oxides of iron, FeO, Fe2O3, and Fe3O4. Heaven knows which one was formed in these reactions, and it was probably a ghastly mixture of them. But the formation of all of these is highly exothermic. It gives out a lot of heat. So you have iron going into the liquid oxygen, producing a lot of heat, and because it's so hot, it produces a lot of light. In essence, what was happening is that you have small pieces of very hot iron in liquid oxygen, and they were really beautiful colours. A reaction like this is not very reproducible because it depends exactly where you drop it, how the light is reflected, where Brady was standing when he took the shot. So every picture is different, and nearly all of them are really beautiful. Liquid oxygen is at a low temperature, minus 186 degrees centigrade. And you're dropping in a piece of hot metal, and you would expect that metal to cool down. But it was getting hotter. The obvious interpretation, if you see these pictures, is that somehow the iron is burning in this really cold liquid. But that's a contradiction. How can something be very hot and very cold at the same time? Now, what I thought was that the iron was so hot that it was effectively in a bubble of oxygen gas, which was bubbling up all the time, but was able to sustain the combustion. But you can't really see that from top because you're looking through liquid oxygen. So we decided we needed to do another experiment looking at this vessel sideways. So you could see the liquid and at the same time you could see the iron at the bottom and see what was happening. But experimentally, this is not easy. The first problem is that liquid oxygen is very cold. So the air contains water vapour, which can condense and ice the whole thing up very quickly. You could get round this by using a transparent Dewar flask, thermos flask, but they're quite expensive. And the last thing you want to do is to put hot metal inside it and crack your favourite thermos vessel. And because these are evacuated, if they do crack, they will explode spectacularly which might make a good video, but is unfortunate if it's an expensive piece of kit. So after discussion with Neil, we decided that the best thing to do was to use an ordinary beaker and to put it in a plastic box, the one he'd carefully made, and try and fill the box with either oxygen or nitrogen, which would not condense. The experiment was moderately successful. 
what I was hoping to see was the iron going in, sitting on the bottom and burning, surrounded by bubbling gas. Of course, what happened is that when it went in, there was such a bright flash that it was pretty difficult to film. Though Brady used some quite good tricks to get round this. And we couldn't get rid of all the ice forming. But the other thing which we hadn't thought about was that the reaction was so violent that burning bits of iron were pushed out of the beaker pretty quickly. And they landed on Neil's favourite plastic box and set fire to it. It wasn't actually the plastic, but it was the silicone sealant which caught fire. I didn't think that silicone burnt very much at all. But when you see what happened to Neil's box, we had demonstrated beyond doubt that when you have an atmosphere of oxygen, silicone burns pretty well. And I'm sad to say that Neil's box may be ruined. It's certainly not in a good state. But what was particularly surprising to me was that the iron had got so hot that it had actually gone through the glass of the beaker and effectively punched a hole through it. When we looked at the cauldron, we also found lumps of iron in the bottom because the molten iron was hot and started forming larger lumps. And these larger lumps have a smaller surface area so they don't burn so fast and eventually they cool down and the reaction stops. And you could tell that they were lumps of iron because you could pick them up with a magnet. So, what's the message? Well, it's obvious our experiment failed. We did see something, but we're still arguing what exactly we saw. And I don't think we can produce a really neat explanation of what happened. So we've got to go back to the drawing board and design a better experiment. The film we have taken has had such nice footage, particularly in the cauldron, that we really wanted to show it to you. And I think it's really important to stress that when you're doing science, not every experiment works. And you can still enjoy experiments that fail. And so, enjoy our failure. A very nice object. Now, Steve, I have the impression you think you know what this is. <laughs> this has got to be a Davy lamp. If you were a superhero, that would be your suit. That would be me, yeah. I, mean, I hate to think what my origin story would be, but... Um... There's a second picture here.